So good morning. I hope you had a, an okay night's sleep. <laughs> okay, you know, I'm positive. Um, I'll start with a, a small slide of logistics before I go on into a few words of, uh, you know, uh, framing, trying to kind of give ourselves some framing for, for the day. Uh, except that the first line here is already not working actually because it appears that we don't have the ESSEC uh, network on that floor. Uh, if you want, uh, and there's an urgency to get uh, email, we will, um, you, you can, during the break, you can go on the ninth floor and you can use actually uh, the ESSEC network and the password Asian Center, but you should really be careful with the the case, huh? it should be uh, A, uh, uppercase, uh, and C, uppercase, and all the rest lowercase. Otherwise, in the meantime, we're trying to get access to a different network on that floor, but I'll keep you posted on the information for this. We have uh, only one small change in the um, program. Uh, only one small change in the program. Uh, unfortunately, Shestin uh, Salin, my dear friend uh, and colleague, is unable to come. So in, she was uh, scheduled normally in the morning session. So we will replace her by Laurent Bibar, who is moving up from the afternoon session, which allows us to have uh, three papers in each at, of the parallel sessions this afternoon, which will be a bit better than a session with four papers. Uh, and that means we can win a bit of time so, so that we, since we always lose time, you know, in general. <coughs> In the end, I don't think it will make a difference, but at least we win a bit of time. Uh, we will have lunch at the Raffles, uh, a restaurant that is in the Raffles cam compound, let's say. Uh, we'll, you know, can follow us, but the, the map is also quite clear anyway. We also have to be uh, there on time, because otherwise we are uh, you know, going to uh, make a bit of mess of, of the schedule. So, a few words on, um, on, on this uh, conference and, and on the way maybe, uh, you know, I, I've been thinking about uh, those issues. Uh, we discussed already quite a bit of that yesterday and uh, in the context of um, uh, the 90s and the part of the uh, beginning of this new uh, millennium, um, and particularly, I would say, in the context of business school, the notion that uh, globalization was leading us towards uh, an increasingly flat world where frontiers and geocultural differences matter less and less was quite widespread. Um, basically leading us to a sense that uh, history didn't matter so much and, you know, and I, I would add here that geography uh, also didn't matter so, so much. I mean, we had the, the sentence at the end of history, Laurent is going to talk to us about this, but I guess we could also have had the sentence the end of geography. Obviously, um, the, this is, and we started obviously getting into that very strongly yesterday with Professor Sasson's uh, presentation, uh, this is clearly, uh, you know, uh, uh, a dream, or to this was clearly a dream and an illusion, and uh, we know that both history and, and geography matter, and they may even matter more uh, than ever. So trying to actually reinterpret uh, or rethink globalization uh, as geography, uh, you know, I'm proposing to, to look at globalization as actually geography or geographies in flux on different Levels. I mean, there's also always something that is interesting to remind ourselves on a very simple definition of geography, which is kind of the uh, notion of the nation state. Uh, in 1980, so we can see 1980 as, in a sense, kind of the beginning of, of the, the huge globalization period, uh, the main globalization period that, as we know it, contemporary one at least. Uh, the UN had 154 members, and today we are 193 members. So only at that pure and simple level, we have had a complete redrawing of, of, of geographies in the sense of the emergence of 35 new countries in, uh, since 1990. I think, you know, I checked that and it seems to be the greatest number of, create, of countries created in such a short period of time or over human history. So that in itself is quite an interesting, uh, you know, geography in flux sense. 
so we were, you know, and we will probably be talking a bit more with uh, Professor Duara tonight about the nation state as a global myth. Clearly, the nation sa state as a global myth is not dead, uh, as you know, some of the proponents of uh, the globalization idea had suggested, uh, but. We can also see from that that geographies in this simple sense of, of, of borders of nation states are definitely far from stable. Who knows how many countries we'll have in 30 years from now. Um, another obvious place where globalization is geographies in flux is, you know, this is really, can be very fast, is the uh, ecological transformations, which are, we all know, uh, and this is in the news every day, uh, having a profound impact. Uh, and we know that those ecological transformations are and very prudent here, at least in part, human and globalization made. And um, so this is, you know, quite an important dimension. Another uh, view on globalization as geographies in flux is, is obviously the, the, the debate. We mentioned it also yesterday around the idea of sustainability, which interestingly is historically only uh, the rebirth of a quite old debate, which goes back to Malthus at least, but has actually had several lives ever since. So the confrontation of development on the one hand and limited resources on the other hand. So uh, this is clearly a big issue today. But again, it's not a new, new thing. Huh? It's far from being a new, new thing. Um, Another uh, interesting dimension, I think, of globalization as geographies in flux is this is really connected to quite a bit of the work that I've been doing on, on transnational, what I call transnational communities, and I'll say more in the presentation of my paper later. Uh, something that was actually uh, has been quite striking in our work on transnational communities, and including uh, virtual and online uh, communities, is that actually not only history is very strongly pregnant in those communities and in the ways in which those communities are structured, but, but Obviously, geographies are also very much included in the way in which those communities are structured and function. So even there, uh, in a sense, the speciality of human action and interactions and exchanges is very present and very pregnant. Changing maps of migration and new forms of colonialism, we talked about that very uh, a lot already with Professor Sasson uh, yesterday, uh, and the striking new uh, participants of these new forms of colonialism, uh, China and India and Africa, Middle Eastern countries across the world. Uh, we all know about that. Uh, I added this sentence here using uh, the notion that Professor Saskia Sassen uh, gave us yesterday, the notion of structural holes, which I found indeed very also uh, important to understand this globalization as geographies in flux. So the, 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 the uh, basically, the globalization, globalization process creating within the sovereignty of national states those structural walls which are either reflecting other sovereignties or are actually pockets of globalizations in the local. So that's actually definitely another way in which geographies are in flux. The development of transnational integration regime, by this, again, I will explain a bit more, but essentially uh, the, the major developments over the last 40 years of uh, regional integration patterns, uh, the EU being the kind of most obvious of those, but obviously we have had quite a number of others, NAFTA, ASEAN, etc. Uh, and I, I add, obviously, here, the, uh, maybe, in fact, the ups and downs in those regimes, because if we actually look at the EU today, uh, the question is more about how how long will it survive or how in which form will it survive whether rather than actually you know how further will be the integration so uh, this is all also creating uh, a whole flux flu, you know uh, a big flux in 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 global in, in geographies associated in great part with globalization and the continued inscription uh, in, of the global in local territories, uh, again, you know, building on Saskia Sassen's work, this is really a very important uh, dimension of globalization, creating, you know, geographies in flux. The, you know, we, we know that about finance, but we know that about many other uh, dimensions of uh, uh, human interactions and human actions, where uh, the global, uh, in the same territory, in the same geographical, geogra geographical space, we have different meaning and reference systems, different projections and self-projections, uh, increasing with, with one of the consequences being the increasing inequalities within countries that uh, um, Arijit was uh, mentioning yesterday. 
So, you know, geography as a discipline, we have to also realize that, and this will actually, Laurent will talk about that quite a bit a bit later today, uh, has become through time more complex. Uh, an important way in which it has become more complex is it has moved from static descriptions towards dynamic uh, focus, and so from uh, physical and static description of the natural environment and resources, then from physical description of territories as shaped by human societies towards a focus on the dynamics of flows and exchanges, the dynamics of power interactions, the geoeconomics and geopolitics, but also even more importantly, the interplay between the, those dynamics of flows and exchanges on the one hand, dynamics of power and integration on the other. And as we look into economic geography as a discipline, or as, as in, uh, we look into, sorry, geography as a discipline, we realize that actually um, in the last 10 years or so, it's been, quote unquote, encroaching on the territories of um, invoking many other social sciences. Uh, as, as, as much as I think we should as, you know, sociologists or business scholars or anthropologists or etc., uh, economists, also actually take into account uh, geography uh, for our own discipline to, and integrate geography into our disciplines. Uh, I would, you know, make a case for geography as a multidisciplinary science par excellence, where actually a very fascinating dimension of geography is precisely the interpretation of nature, human history, cultural interactions and flow, the interplay of economic, social, political and cultural dimensions, which uh, are allowing us to, to approach uh, the complexity of the contemporary world in ways that maybe not so many social sciences are uh, able to. Uh, and this is really enriched, as I just said, by the move of geography as a discipline from static descriptions to dynamic and fluid projections. And uh, Hegley will talk to us about the planification of the future. And clearly, geography is moving also uh, strongly in, in its recent years in that direction. So it's a very, uh, interestingly, a very uh, dynamic uh, intellectual field, even though uh, there's still a kind of a surprising thing, which is that geography has, in fact, disappeared from many universities in the US. It's not even at Harvard. You don't even have a geography department, for example, in many uh, other universities in the US. You don't. Um, to the benefit of social science and social studies, I mean, there's a nice history that has been written by geographers on Harvard this happened. Uh, it's not doing so well in, in some other countries. I know in France, for example, it's not really very present uh, in, uh, in a lot of universities. I think it's doing better in Scandinavian countries, but it's a kind of a surprising uh, situation. So I, you know, trying to push the idea that it's time for a triumphant return of geography. And I'll finish with a um, Basically, the, what I see as, as within the context of business schools or business studies in general, uh, the issues of focus that uh, are very important in our business school context today and that a lot of us are working on. And actually, as, you, as I grow, go through the issues, I think I'm covering almost all the papers that are being presented over uh, this day. Uh, and the issues where I think uh, an integration of a uh, geographic perspective would be extremely useful uh, to, to move forward in our understanding of those issues. Uh, obviously, uh, all the issues having to do with the multinational and transnational firm, and Eve will introduce that in a few minutes, uh, are having a deep interpenetration with geographies understood as uh, I presented it uh, a bit earlier. All the debate around business and society and the changes in the dynamics of globalization and geopolitics and the impact those are having on business. By definition, this is really becoming a big, big fashionable uh, theme in business schools and obviously the, the, the connection with geography and geographies in flux is extremely important. The uh, work on global value chains and global markets obviously is very closely uh, and tightly interconnected with uh, ge geography and the geographical understanding. Uh, innovation clusters, we'll have uh, also a paper on that a bit later, are also very much connected uh, uh, with uh, you know, geographies and, and, and their uh, evolution. Uh, and within that context, we have the particular case of the geographies of finance, in which also we'll have some uh, discussions a bit later today. 
Um, the management of risks and crises, and needless to say that this would strongly benefit from more geographical integration. Uh, the tricky issue of global governance uh, and its necessary geographical inscription, and I will try to show that in my own paper a bit later. The challenge of sustainability, as I tried to underscore before, which is really one of kind of the new new thing, which is not a new new thing, but is uh, at the core of a lot of again studies and in, within business context, uh, and is tightly connected with a geographical perspective. Uh, and I add here the strange notion of global corporate responsibility, which is such a, a buzzword within the business school context, but when you think about it, it really means nothing until you start thinking about it in more, uh, with a more geographical perspective. Uh, new forms of capital mobilization, here I'm mentioning in particular as a, as a case, because we have a paper uh, that uh, talks about that, uh, the return of state capitalism, sovereign wealth funds, etc., uh, and the very powerful geopolitical implications, therefore geographical implications that those are having. And obviously, you know, one of the things we wanted to do with Arages is have a particular focus on Asia being here in Singapore uh, and, and the particular Asian context uh, will be something that we'll also focus on together, together with Professor Duara uh, in the keynote. So this is a bit the idea. This is how and why. That, this is how I see at least all the papers here being brought together around uh, actually this same attempt. Uh, and with no uh, further ado, I will leave the floor to Eve, who will start us on with the first presentation. And hopefully I find it. And the way uh, we will do is, uh, we'll, we have half an hour for each paper, and since in some sessions the papers are not directly tied to each other, uh, we will do 15 minutes presentation and a 15 minute discussion per paper, and then we move on to the next paper. Okay.